Hello, 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 everybody. 
Welcome back to another episode of My Better Living. I am Nurse Shar, and we're going to spend some time today, as we do always, having honest and healing conversations about the benefits, the challenge, and the real life struggles of living healthy, fit, well and free. I'm so happy to be back. This is the Thanksgiving special. Like I said, I am Nurse Shar. Today we have an awesome lineup for you. Um, we're going to be talking, of course, you know, I have to have my motivational quotes. I told you before, as I go through my timeline, I find people that have, that either share or say some things that really get me charged. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about Thanksgiving wellness seasonal blues as you know um, it's that time of year where people get a little bit depressive so we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, and talk about some things that you can do to combat that um, also we have a very special guest that's going to be joining us at the top of the hour and that's mr charlie palmer and he's going to come and talk to us about organic and sustainable living and he's going to be joining us all the way from from alaska so we're going to learn all about that and of course you know i have to keep you up to date with some of our upcoming events uh, so that you can stay tuned and get involved thank you to everybody who's watching right now uh uh, the podcast is being broadcast live right now on Power Plug Radio, Facebook, as well as My Better Living, Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, Power Plug Radio is the home of your throwback jams. You can download Power Plug Radio on Google Play or in the Apple iStore. Don't forget to subscribe to My Better, uh, My Better Living and Power Plug Radio YouTube. And you can catch me right here live on Mondays at 7.30 can always go to my better living uh llc.com for more information or you can go to powerplugradio.com for more information there all right so i want to get started with my motivational quotes right because i told you i have some great people on my timeline and they have some great things to say both of these are actually coming from the same person who shared this and i can always count on her to have an awesome uh word of encouragement or a little something to give you a little juice so this is coming from lola benet and the first one says and i thought this was kind of funny and cute but it says may your coffee your pelvic floor, your intuition and self-appreciation be strong. Again, may your coffee, your pelvic floor, intuition and self-appreciation be strong. And I think that one was kind of meant for my ladies with the pelvic floor. If you know what I mean, you know what I mean. If you know, you know, like they say. Um, the second one says to be rooted is perhaps the most important and least recognized need of the human soul. Y'all got that? To be rooted is perhaps the most important and least recognized need of the human soul. Do you guys come across some great motivational quotes that you want me to read online? That one's coming from my Facebook friend, Lola Benet. Lola, I love you. Um, if you guys know some great motivational quotes or you see something great that comes across your timeline send me an email my better living llc at gmail.com and let me know i'll read it on air let me know who um who shared it and um i will certainly read it online just to give everybody a little bit of zhuzh i mean at the end of the day um everyone's timeline and algorithm is just a little bit different right so depending on what you're looking at you might see something different um, but I, I love my timeline and I love the people that are on my timeline that really um, like to go there with with just making sure that things are kosher uh, with people, you know, sharing some good words, sharing some kind words. Um, I do want to give a awesome, awesome shout out right now to um, everybody watching everybody listening live you can also catch playbacks of this show um through youtube or you can also go to spotify and uh listen to it in your car at work or anywhere um that your mobile device takes you so thank you very much to everyone who is um listening and watching so let's just talk let's jump right into it it is thanksgiving i think that I think I saw somebody say that it's taking too long and they can already smell the food. So we're going to talk about Thanksgiving because 
you know, Thanksgiving wellness, because it's kind of like a double edged sword, right? You want to eat good. You want to be festive. You don't want to be a party pooper, but you also don't want to feel like, um, guilty or sluggish, you know, after, and really I would say guilty after eating, um, your wonderful Thanksgiving meal. Now, I know many of you know that I'm a plant-based eater. Um, I'm actually cooking Thanksgiving dinner this year for some of my family members. Um, I am not going to torture them by making everything plant-based. So um, I will make sure that there are options. But um, I think if we're talking along the lines of Thanksgiving wellness, you know, I think some things that over the years have um, maybe kept me grounded and um, kept me from thinking that this was going to be my last meal ever is the thought that this is not going to be my last meal ever. Right. And I know that there is this tradition on Thanksgiving that we just engorge ourselves with food. Um, but there's not as much of a tradition that says, well, um, maybe I'll pace myself. Maybe I'll go for a walk. Um, maybe I'll split that Thanksgiving meal instead of eating everything, um, on the first day. I mean, you're probably going to have it in your house for at least a day or two. Um, maybe save some things. Um, taking that afternoon walk with your friends or family members. Or maybe taking a morning walk. Um, you know, that might not help either. I think that being around family and friends is definitely good for your psyche. Definitely good for your mental health. And we're going to talk a little bit later about seasonal blues. Um, but as far as Thanksgiving Day is concerned, let me know. Drop me a note. I want to know, what are you eating on Thanksgiving? Um, I saw somebody said um, they ate a Shout out to Kenyatta. How you doing, Kenyatta? She said, yes, because I ate a low vibrational lunch and now my stomach is vibrating. Listen, um, that, that has definitely been the joke over the last couple months about about, uh, low vibrational plates and what people who vibrate low eat on their plates. My thing is to you is everything in moderation. You know, you don't have to deprive yourself on Thanksgiving. Um, I think what happens for a lot of people and, and, you know, I've been guilty of this where, um, Thanksgiving is sort of like the beginning of the end right? For the holiday season. Thanksgiving kicks off the holiday season. And at the same time, it sort of kicks off this um, cycle of bad eating or bad habits. Um, if you've been doing well this year, and you've been you know, on a weight loss journey, on just an eat right journey, on an eat better journey. Um, don't let Thanksgiving be your spiral into something that it doesn't need to be. Um, a lot of that is constraint. Um, I think a lot of that is discipline. But a lot of that is just knowing that there are other days ahead. Usually we start with Thanksgiving and we end on New Year. And I would say that's like maybe a six week span of people just basically saying, F it, I'm just going to eat um, and I'll start again in January. But it doesn't have to be like that. And I know it's a struggle because, and honestly, if you want to back that up, it kind of starts with, you know, Halloween, right? With the extra candy that's laying around that some of you are probably still eating. Um, but it starts into like a spiral of, and, and sometimes it feels like no return. Well, I'll just start back in January. Oh, I'll just um, pick back up again after the holidays. But it doesn't have to be that way. I think one way that we can combat that is by reprogramming how we feel about the holidays, right? The holiday is just that it's a holiday. Um, it doesn't, it's not your birthday. So it doesn't need to turn into a whole holla month. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about this, I think early in the year about um, holiday dinners and, you know, what to bring to potlucks. There's going to be a lot of potlucks coming up. Um, and I, and I can hear somebody now saying, but I don't eat everybody's food. Um, and that's great. But, you know, picking um, maybe a healthier option, you know, s reserving your calories for when you want to eat them the most. You know, the Friendsgivings are very popular and people will tend to um, start doing Friendsgiving like the week before, the weekend before Thanksgiving because they want to spend time with their friends um, and share Thanksgiving with their friends, but also spend Thanksgiving with their family. But your friends... Friendsgiving doesn't have to be a Thanksgiving dinner. It can be whatever you want it to be. Um, you can have a Friendsgiving and eat seafood. You can have a friend's dinner and eat pasta and salad. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a, 
a Thanksgiving meal. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, uh, just reprogram your mind of how you think about um, Thanksgiving, how you think about Thanksgiving meals, how you think about the holidays itself. Um, I think that if you don't want to wake up on January 1st, uh, feeling like you have an uphill battle um, to go, especially if you've been working so hard this year. I think that you definitely don't want that to go to waste. So I think thinking of Thanksgiving and, and repackaging what Thanksgiving is for you in this Thanksgiving holiday can mean a world of difference. You know, I think my advice to everybody is just stay well this Thanksgiving. Go for a walk. Take some extra steps. At the end, it may not seem a lot like a lot, but at the end, it's so worth it. Trust me, you'll feel better. You won't feel like if you did nothing else but maintained your weight this holiday season, I personally would consider that a success. If you gained not a pound and you just maintain your weight, you should pat yourself on the back and consider that a success. So with that, um, I want to know what everybody's having for Thanksgiving. So drop me a comment, um, send me a message because I want to know. I want to know what's going to be on those low vibrational plates because I know they're going to be vibrating at the bottom, but that's okay. Um, so everybody, I want to wish you the best Thanksgiving. Have a great time. Spend wonderful time with your families. Um, and I think that's what I love the most about Thanksgiving is just the time that you can spend with your family members, with um, people that you love. And so that for me is probably, um, I would have to say that Thanksgiving is my favorite time of year. I, I really would. So with that, we're going to switch because Thanksgiving also ushers in Thanksgiving wellness. Uh, it kind of leads me into my next topic because it sort of um, ushers in something else. Not only does it usher in um, our, our hunger side and maybe some bad habits, um, but I will also say that it ushers in a time of seasonal uh depression what we call the seasonal what i like to call the seasonal blues so um it's actually a real thing you know if you ever notice that there's people who get a little bit um down or depressed during this time of year it's called seasonal affective disorder and it's a type of depression that usually affects people during certain times of year very common in the winter times and very common in in areas where there's um low sunlight um some signs and symptoms and and this is not only for um you know for you but i think that this is also for family members if you know somebody who's experiencing this you know maybe you can help them out because they might not know what's going on you know we usually see um here in the united states an uptick in suicide during this time of year for some people this is a glorious time of year and for some people not so much so some some, some symptoms of seasonal affective disorder includes feeling listless sad down losing interest in activities that you once enjoyed having low or no energy at all um, having problems sleeping too much um, craving a lot of carbs right overeating and weight gain so this is not just isolated so you know if you're craving carbs and you're you know eating a little bit more um it sort of has to be coupled with some of these other things for you to really kind of consider it a seasonal affective disorder now and and at all times i always recommend you know me if 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 something doesn't feel right and you need a uh, an opinion i really recommend that you get um a professional's opinion you know go see your provider um so Eating, eating a lot of carbs, having difficulty concentrating, just feeling really down, uh, worthless, guilty, and, and, and really just having depressive thoughts. Overeating um, and appetite changes, weight gain, feeling tight and sluggish are probably more of the common ones. But there's things that you can do, right? And some of the things that you can do if you're feeling this way, or if you know somebody um, that is feeling this way or, or, or battles with this, you know, recommend some things for them. Maybe recommend that they go outside. You know, that sunlight and that vitamin D, there's nothing that can compare to that. Nothing at all. So, you know, um, vitamin D, 
really getting some light, you know, maybe suggest that they talk to somebody, you know, whether it's a, a counselor, a trusted somebody, um, learning how to manage stress, learning to build healthy behaviors, maybe taking a walk, um, can all be great things that can help combat seasonal affective disorder. Of course, you know, I love home remedies. I love um, natural remedies. So sunlight is definitely at the top of that list. Exercise, regular exercise, even if it's just walking, walking your pet, walking yourself, um, even if it's just walking, normalizing your sleep patterns, right? So making sure that you schedule yourself for when it's time to go to bed. And one of the things that they said about going to bed is you might, you don't want too much activity right before you go to bed. So scrolling social media is probably not the best thing for you to do right before you go to bed, because a lot of times you come across something that might get you worked up. Some other um, great natural mood enhancers are different foods that you can eat that can enhance your moods. Dark chocolate. You know, a lot of people don't like dark chocolate. I actually like dark chocolate, um, but dark chocolate is known to be a natural mood, has natural mood boosting compounds. Um, grateful fuel for your brain. Um, berries. Um, berries has some great antioxidants. Um, great for, for building up your mood. Nuts and seeds. You notice what is like you know, it's along the lines of, you know, plant-based eating, um, beans and lentils. A lot of these things carry great compounds that can help improve your mood. Um, and I think coupled with other things like going outside, getting some exercise, um, really sunlight, you know, getting some sunlight, you know, even that can help, you know, boost your moods. So, you know, check on a loved one this, this, this time of year, um, make sure that, you know, you don't count people out. Sometimes people go silent and you think, oh, well, what's wrong with them? You never know, you know, who might be going through what. Um, take somebody on a walk. Say, hey, let's go for a walk. Let's get outside. It's okay. Um, you know, a lot of people, they don't know where to start. They don't know how to start. They don't know um, how to reach out for help. And so I feel like if you're close to people, you know, part of living is not only, you know, being successful within ourselves, um, but really looking out for others, really looking out for those around us. That's a big part of um, who we are as humans, right? And how we were built to to um, sort of look out for ourselves and look out for other people. So that's one thing that I'm definitely a big proponent of. If you see something, say something, especially as it deals with like your loved ones or people around you, that may not be feeling the greatest. Maybe something's going on and it's okay you know a lot of people a lot of times these days people want to say I just want to mind my business and and sometimes that's okay but you know if it's somebody that you really care about that's really close to you I think you know tugging on them and saying hey you know something's been a little off I think that's okay I think that's absolutely okay um, before we get to our special guest, I do want to let you guys know, uh, for anybody who knows me, knows that I literally collect lip balms. You probably can't see this one, um, but I keep like a jar. You probably can't see my jar either, um, um, but I keep a jar. This thing right here, this little shadow thing that you see is a jar of lip balm that I keep. Can't never have too much lip balm, right? That's how I fight off my seasonal blues with lip balm. But before we get to our special guest today, I want to talk about some upcoming events that I definitely, definitely think that you are going to like. Um, so the first one, let me see, what's up first? Do, 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 do. So My Better Living, and uh, let me let me show you guys this because I'm, I'm really digging um, a lot of these things that we have uh, going on. But My Better Living is now um, partnering with... Dun, da, da, da. Um, she wins totally as well as the bird cares for a 
Cocktails and Conversation series is a virtual series for women. It's a four-part series that starts on December 1st, which is, by the way, World AIDS Day. And so on December 1st, we will be talking about sexual healing, gaining value and validation, and that will be hosted by the heiress, Leslie. Um, and so during this topic, it's a safe space. We're going to be discussing finding freedom, validation, and value in a sexual healing journey. You can visit thebirdcares.com forward slash events to sign up for this and the other lecture series. It's more of a discussion, less of a lecture. So, and each one's going to be hosted by a different person. So, uh, we have upcoming. So, this is the first one. So, that's December 1st, World Days Day, market calendars. Go to the website, register now for the safe space. Get your, figure out what you're going to drink because that's an important part, right? Your cocktails because it's cocktails and conversations. So, you have to figure out what you're going to drink. And we're just going to have a great time just really talking about, you know, our own sexual healing as as women. So these are for women. Share with the friend, share with the sister. You guys can get together as a group and do this. Um, but just make sure that you register to enter this safe space. It's free to register. It's free to attend. We just ask that you come um, to this judgment free zone just ready to have discussion, ready to listen, and, um, you know, just just ready to participate with your cocktail, right? Because everything goes better with a cocktail. So that is a wonderful collaboration. We look forward to doing more of these. The first one is coming up on December 1st, and that is Sexual Healing Gaining Value and Validation. So I um, really, really like that. Let me see what else I got for y'all today. <coughs> All right. So, um, also as part of this, um, you know, my better living is also partnering with the bird cares on, um, giving out the new spin a night bag. So this is the new spin a night bag. I love it because I, I, I like how <coughs> we're really pushing some great things here. So this is your new spin a night bag that you can get, <coughs> excuse me, at the Bird Cares Field Office, 2184 9th Avenue South. We partnered with um, the Bird Cares and Power Plug Radio <coughs> to give these out during the last He Say, She Say, which was awesome. We uh, gave out about six of these. And, um, you know, this is your new spin a night bag, right? It's time for us to take control of our own sexual health. What better than your own HIV home home test kit? You have your sexual health kits that include condoms and lube and, <coughs> excuse me, any great little things that you need. As you can see in, the, in this picture, there's also some lip balm. You know, I love lip balm. So whatever you need is right here. Excuse me, coughing. So... What else we got for y'all? <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> we have, we have our <clears throat> fourth annual Black Excellence Summit that is coming in February, February 3rd through the 5th. <clears throat> Make sure you save the date, right? That is a very, very, very important event coming up. <clears throat> you got a lot of people working behind the scenes to make this thing the best ever. We have the Friday night Black Excellence Fashion Show featuring local designers. We have the Black Excellence Career Fair and Vendor Expo. We also have the Black Excellence Black Tie Gala. So, Gala, Gala, Potato, Potato. So, that's a Friday night, a Saturday, and a Sunday. Mark your calendars. Visit www.blackexcellentsummit.org so that you can get more information on if you want to be a sponsor, if you want to donate, if you want to donate some time. Um, we love that too. If you want to be a vendor, if your job is offering um, training or um, um, has some vacancies and wants to participate, um, we're looking for those as well. So a great committee of people behind the scenes working on this and i definitely wanted to share this as we um 
as we work on our last quarter of this year and as we enter into the next quarter um, of the new year. So that's what we have upcoming for events. Um, I'm getting ready to introduce our guest speaker. And um, so this segment is actually um, sponsored by the Bird Cares. You know, for those of you who've been following me, y'all know that this is one of my favorite nonprofit organizations just because of the great work that they do in the community to really help bridge the gap between um, <clears throat> The people who have resources and people who don't have resources that just really just need to get um, what they need to get, you know, really responsible for really pushing at home HIV testing, um, really pushing for great messaging for black and brown people so that they don't feel stigmatized. So um, I just want to thank the Bird Cares nonprofit organization. Um, dealing with the challenges of today require problem solvers who bring different perspectives and are willing to take risks. The Bird Cares emerged out of a pursuit to inspire and support the community and a desire for actions to speak louder than words. They were established in 2017 and they are an organization driven by progressive ideas, bold actions, and a strong foundation of support. The Bird Cares is dedicated, dedicated to improving health outcomes in high-risk communities, one message and event at a time. Their mission is to inspire health and behavioral changes among families and communities through health promotion, target marketing, and education. So let the Bird Cares take your health message from idea to reality. So that is um, my favorite nonprofit organization. Okay, so now I'm going to introduce my guest, Mr. Charlie Palmer. And um, he is a well, you know what, I'm gonna bring him on. And I'm gonna let you I'm gonna let him tell you um, all the hats that he wears, because I know that he's a uh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna bring him on y'all y'all hold on one, one second. Charlie. Well, hello, hello. Yeah. Is my hello. volume good? Yes, I can hear you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. This is Charlie Palmer, and he's here to talk to us about organic and sustainable living. Now, Charlie, are you retired Air Force? I am retired Army. You're retired Army. Okay. So I yes, knew indeed. that you were military. Yes. And where are you where are you at now? I'm st I am currently living my best life in uh Fairbanks slash North Pole, Alaska. North wait a minute. It's Fairbanks <laughs> slash North Pole, Alaska. North Pole, yes. I, I that have to sounds say that. I have really to say that. far north. Yes, it is far and uh, it is it is cold in the winter. Uh, well I would bet. I mean, okay, so how many mm -hmm. months of the year is cold? uh well it's not necessarily months of the year but uh when you when you say months of the year it's the darkness that folks are referring to from june, ah. from june yeah from mid-june about the 21st we start losing uh seconds to minutes of light oh wow and june does it so go like by june fast 21st, no it does summer summer doesn't seem like it go by fast because we do a lot of gardening and stuff so okay so yeah we we want to get into this um organic and sustainable living and a lot of people don't really understand what that is so why don't you just um give people a a brief sort of idea on what organic sustainable living actually is because it sounds like an impossible feat but it's not well let, let me give a little bit about my family history and how we um grew to be to being you know to eating organic and being more sustainable uh I have four children. Um, they're adults now, except um, even my youngest, she's 18. And my oldest, my son, um, for some reason, he was allergic to red meat, which was a blessing wait. in disguise. Yes. Wait, yes. Um, How come yes. I wasn't allergic to red meat? Like all Love. the years. <laughs> yep. Okay, so how did you figure out he was allergic to red meat? Well, every time we, uh, well, this is years ago, uh, <laughs> late 90s maybe i'm telling my age um 
every time we bought um, McDonald's at the time, we used to get the small burgers or whatever, not not the Big Macs, but like the small small amounts of beef. Every time he would eat it, and um, he would break out. You know, he would get a rash or he would be sick. So it's, it, for us, it, you know, um, that was enough allergic reaction. You know, we never got him mm-hmm. tested to see if he was actually allergic to red meat. But that enough for us uh, started our journey um, into, um, you know, better eating. Um, and especially when we found out about um, uh, GMOs, genetically modified organisms, when Kentucky mm-hmm. Fried Chicken changed their, changed their logo from Kentucky Fried Chicken to KFC because it's no longer so chicken. Was, so was that, you know, you read about these things, but is yeah, that for real? real? <laughs> It, no, it, it kind of is like along why, the line of, 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 of WWF changing it to WWE because it's like, right. this is just entertainment purposes only. So this right, is just exactly. for play yeah. play. Same, Interesting. same respect, but on the food, on the, on the health side, they can right. no longer use the word chicken because it's not chicken. It's a GMO. It's a genetically, genetically modified organism. So scary. Uh, yeah, as you know, um, prior to the military, uh, I had my, I was growing my dreads. I'm you know, Rastafarian by, by nature. Um, and that took us on a journey where we started diving deep into exactly what we're putting into our body, you know? Um, and, it, and it was very interesting in terms of what we found. Um, and basically you for find? folks who, you know, well, what we found is that um, if you can't pronounce it, you know, you probably shouldn't be eating it. <laughs> You know, it, you look on the back, you look on the back of some of these cartons and, um, and if it's, if it's a dye, you know, if it says red number four or, or yellow number five, yellow you know, five, not, even yep, cra- not even crayons, not even crayons come, you know, come in the, those definitions. It's just yellow, red, orange, you know? So, um, if it's, if it's, if it's unpronounceable, uh, it's, it's probably not good for you. Uh, good rule of thumb. You know, so. Yeah, you know, organic. A lot of folks, um, a lot of folks want to go. You know, get into better eating, better living, and they find that the cost of it is, is very daunting. Uh, and that's that's one of the that's one of the turnaways. That's one one of the you know the negative sides of uh, trying to get into this. Um, and it's not a lifestyle. It's just more or less. Um, it's more or less a way of growing and a way of improving because I look, I look at it like this. Um, you're going to pay one way or another. It's either you pay for good food and you pay for organic food, you pay for, you know, um, changing your lifestyle or you're going to pay medical bills. So, so it's up to you. You know, facts right. and a lot of people that it's have been deal. following me know that i i live by that you know um you are yep. what you eat and your you are. your your digestive system starts in your starts in your mouth and ends on the yep. other way so yep. you can use that digestive system to fuel your body to right. heal you um <clears throat> to give you energy or right. you can use it as a trash chute yeah you. exactly yeah. You know, um, no, uh, Damien, and, and <laughs> I think Damien, Damien Marley has a, um, I forget what song it is, but Damien Marley has a song where he says, um, most people put better fuel in their car, but then they, then they put nutrients in their body. That is facts. <laughs> that know? is facts. That is so, facts. Yeah. Is you facts. have to, you have to, you have to want, uh, you know, a, a, a life with, with less pain. Uh, I think that's the best way of putting it. Um, one of my one of my um my my skill sets and education from the military was uh i was a drug and alcohol counselor and an opioid counselor for fairbanks alaska and um you know a lot of folks turn to pain meds and not knowing that there's not you know a lot of natural alternatives before they even you know just take those pills because you know we go to a doctor and the doctor prescribes it and we just pop it but that's mm-hmm. you know that's not conducive to healing because if you look at the side effects of most of the pills that they give you it it, it causes other ailments 
you know, so. Not only that, but, you know, for every pill out there, <clears throat> there's probably equally some type of natural resource that matches it. Yeah. Um, either yeah, by there plant is, there or is. some type of food item or some mixture of natural items. There is some equivalent. Right. I think that the thing that holds people back is um, the lack of knowledge, lack of, lack of research, yes. um, lack of trust, I think, in nature. Yes, that's um, a, that's a that's a big one. Um, and when it comes to the, the knowledge portion, you have to understand that uh, for me, and it should be the same for everyone. Y your knowledge uh, of doing well and eating well c comes. Uh, it's a lifetime journey. It's not a race. You're not racing anyone. You know, you're not trying to be better than anyone. It's it's strictly for you. And right. and the more people you could involve in your family. Um, and we've done that by way of, uh, increasing our sustainability by growing, you know, a lot of our own foods. I have potatoes. So explain to me the sustainability part. So the organic and the sustainability. So it sounds like, you know, you had a need for averting allergic reactions in your son as to why you guys kind of went organic, but explain the sustainability part. Well, sustainability for me, um, and it doesn't matter your location anymore, because uh, have you seen what's going on with our weather? I'd like to tie the sustainability part into our our current climate, and it's not getting better, folks. You know what I mean? No matter where you live, you know, if you took a look at what happened in Texas with that freeze up, the sustainability right. has, has more or less to do with you being sustainable as a family unit. Because there are not enough cops, there are not enough ambulances to come and help when, when those things occur. And one of the best things you could do is grow food and be more sustainable. You know, absolutely. Whether you, you know, whether you have an indoor, uh, indoor growing system that you could grow, um, you could grow lettuce, you could grow beans, uh, you could grow a lot of things year round. You know, I'm growing. You know, my spouse and I, Dr. Palmer, are growing food in our short seasons here in Alaska. So there's no excuse for anyone especially if we live in a warm climate. Not so explain that food. process for me. Like, where did you start? You know, you made this, you made a conscious decision amongst your family, it sounds like, to say, hey, let's go organic and let's, you know, use our natural resources to, to be sustainable, meaning if something happened, we could sustain ourselves. Where did you start? Like, what was the first thing you grew? The first thing we grew? Oh, well, I, I don't know if it's, like I said, it's, it's a life journey. I don't think we know we started, and you know, like we had a starting point where we're like, yeah, we're gonna do this, uh, because even back in Brooklyn, um, we had, you know, we had a lot of plants in the house, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, for, for better for better for better air quality. Um, right. <clears throat> and it might have, it might have started with that, but then in terms of growing food, as you know, living here with a short season in Alaska. Uh, we started looking at the size of our backyard and we're like, uh, man, we're not even using half of our property. Um, so the first thing we grew was, ooh, it's the first thing we grew. I remember I did a potato bag. And here's the thing. We, we started breaking it down to foods that we eat, eat and then foods mm -hmm. that we actually like to eat. So okay. I, I think that one year I did a, I did a potato barrel. But my spouse did, uh, she did cabbage. She did onions Ooh. and uh, it was cabbage, onions and broccoli. That's right. That's the first, that's the first garden we had uh, a few years back. Um, okay. And yeah, and it was prosperous and, um, and I've been growing and adding on to my gardening skills per se, in terms of the potatoes, I, I found out that I'm better with the ground provisions, you know, potatoes and, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. my spouse. Uh, what other kind of ground provisions you have in there? there? Say again. What other kind of ground? What other kind of ground provisions you have in there? <laughs> well, this well, actually this year I'm trying. I'm looking at uh, uh, planting some dashins and uh, some some stuff that's more indigenous to our island. Um, yeah. Because so for those of you who don't the, know, uh, Charlie Charlie is um, from my island home too, San Lucia. So um, ground provisions is what we call um, root vegetables like. Um, potatoes and dashing cassava, and, uh, yeah. cassava those things um we call those ground provisions so that will be very very exciting what is for you the most enjoyable part of the process 
And how did you get your uh, kids involved? Because you know, kids don't like well, all that stuff. These kids these days, well, they don't like outside labor. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I put it to you like this. My 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 children were when we our kids, um, we we raise our kids to enjoy the outdoors more than any, you know, mm-hmm. a lot, you know, especially because we our winters are long. So if you're in if you're indoors in the summer, and like you were saying about mental health and checking on people, you know, you might want to check on your kids if they're inside in the summer here in Alaska. You know, so um, we got our kids involved by by not not pressing what they sh- should be doing, but getting them to, to like uh, an aspect of what we're doing. Um, for example, my youngest daughter now, she's a herbalist. Like she can make cough syrup Ooh. out of, um, she'll gather pine needles outside and get some Ooh. eucalyptus and mix that with some honey and some hibiscus. Maybe we'll and have her on like, and, and cook us up some oh. stuff. Oh man, she I she's a herbalist. That. Yeah, so she does the herbs in the house. As I mentioned, I do the you know the ground root vegetables. My spouse does most of the vegetables from any everything from peppers to broccoli. Mm-hmm. So it's a matter of just just plant a seed in in dirt in, in dirt or or get one of the growing systems that don't even use dirt. It uses water, and um and then eat it. So what kind of system do you different. guys have? Do you have just like a backyard where you just water and fertilize, or do you have like an actual system that kind of runs and? Uh, right, yeah. Right now we have two. Well, we have three greenhouses, and um, yeah, next year we're planning on um, doing some rows, like actual row gardening. I've been take we've been taking a look at. Um, there's a I forget the name of the system, but there's a system out of Germany where you could grow on a mound. Um, that way you could reach it better. You don't have to bend down and all kind of stuff. Um, and um, we're looking at doing that next year, and uh, and mo- and uh, also going into honeybees next year also. Oh, bees are so important, and I only just you know learned this you know later in my life. Um, just how important they are. How important they are right. to just sustaining the life of food and uh um, oh, yes. you know when i was doing boot camp you know getting up at 5 30 to go to boot camp we do boot camp out on a tennis court and we would see a lot of dead bees and mm. um it was really my boot camp instructor that you know she was really saddened by it and she said this is horrible you know so many bees yes, are dying um because right. of all of the 5g and everything else that they can't fly that high they get zapped yes. And, yeah. um, yeah. you know, and I don't think that people realize just how important something as small as a bee is to just sustaining yeah. um, food yeah. resources and life. What's your favorite thing to grow? Yeah. Potatoes. Why? Why potatoes? Potatoes just seem because so boring. They, you know what? The, the, they are boring until you grow them oh. because they, they grow they grow very fast. Uh, they, they do require a lot of water, but we have, we have a rain catchment system and I use most of that water to grow them. But the thing about it is that after you grow them and harvest them, you could you could store them, hence the sustainability for a very long time. You know, I still have potatoes from our last harvest, you know, oh, wow. um, and I'll probably still have potatoes, to, you know, till till about till about January when they run out. You know, okay. so that's, nice. that, that's one. of the, Yeah. And that's one of the things. Um, Potato, you can do potatoes indoors. You could do it in a grow bag. You could do it, you know, in a pot. Okay. You know, you don't need a, you don't need a whole lot of space. To, you could put one potato in a in a pot, and you probably have about, depending on the size of the pot, like, you know, between ten to thirty potatoes from that one potato. So it sounds yeah, really low maintenance. It is. It is. You just have to, you just water them, and um, you know, ensure they're in an area where they can get fertilized. Um, Mm-hmm. by bees and um and just get ready for your harvest they're, they're very low maintenance the grow bags are what great would you also. think is the most maintenance like what 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 food item requires the most maintenance Ooh, i would say um because of the bugs that might affect them i would say uh your leafy greens or peppers Mm, on my and okay. that see, and that, that that's applicable to my side um it, it might be something else for someone else in a, in a different grow region mm-hmm. you know it's because of what what insects you have that affect those those things that you're growing so yeah i know down here in florida um growing fruits can be kind of dangerous just because they attract you know 
fruit rats and different types of bugs. So, you know, you have to be careful. You know, of course, my mom being an islander herself, you know, she has planted some things around around her house. She definitely has her mm-hmm. herb garden that she picks from um, for fresh herbs. She um, planted when my daughter was born, actually my grandmother planted a papaya tree um, oh, nice. next to my mom's house. It was huge. It grew taller. It grew really fast and it grew taller than the house. So she had to kind of trim it, um, but gave some great papaya. Now, one thing that I learned from my mom from her planting, one fruit that just takes forever that I did not realize. And so I'm Mm -hmm. really concerned because how do we have so many at a time is pineapples. Pineapples take so long to grow. They take well, like yeah, two they hours, grow, well, two years. I mean, yeah, yeah. They, well, I mean, they, you know, they grow them. Yeah, they grow. They grow them in in mass in in places like Hawaii. So, um, but one of, one of the things uh, I think you mentioned. What did you mention about um, the 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 dangers of you know different bugs that they bring in? Mm-hmm. So 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 that's one of the that's one of the de- deterrents of growing that folks think that you know bugs are going to be infesting your area once you start growing uh, right. different things here's, here's the thing you have to you have to realize so for example um you might have to make some sacrifices if you're getting more voles in your area you might need to get a cat you know that's why you look at most farmers they always have a cat or they always have mm-hmm. some kind of dog. cats keep the water away like voles the like the like either voles or mice okay what's a vole you know um they're they're like they look like mice but they they just make holes everywhere and they they will eat your your, your ground vegetables your ground uh, oh. provisions yeah should i like little they, they, gnomes or moles or hmm. yeah they, they exist in different areas but um so so you you can combat it naturally with you know by bringing in another animal you know you could keep some keep some um small birds and let them loose train them to let them loose and bring them back in you know in the evenings okay. um they could eat different insects stuff like that um okay just yeah just don't just don't spray for them you know you have to find another another bug that takes care of it like we use gotcha. we use ladybug we use ladybugs in our gardens really i love ladybugs yeah, yeah. Ladybugs what do they keep away for, they, they keep away um Oh, what's the, there's a, there's a little white bug that eats away at, uh, some of the pepper plants and, and broccoli plants. I forget the name of it, but, uh, ladybugs loved, uh, they're like aphids. They're, they're in a the family of aphids. Ladybugs love to eat them. Oh, so, wow. you know, there's always, well, there, there's always a natural bugs. kind of thing. Yeah. So that and means they like, do a little bit more <laughs> than look pretty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can get my biggest question frozen. is, what's for Thanksgiving dinner? Uh, this year uh, we went. Uh, I, I always go fishing, but this year we went uh, dip netting, and I've, I've dip net. And what's from that? The shore dip netting is a method of fishing here in Alaska and probably in other areas, but mainly in Alaska, where um, as a as a family you're allowed to get. Um, your sustainable amount of fish per member in your family. So our, I think our number is, uh, I think it's 30, 30 for head, 30 for head of household and 10 per term per member, something like that. Uh, hmm. but we didn't catch our, our, um, our limit this year. I think we only caught 26, uh, salmon, uh, cause that was enough for the cooler. Nice. And that was enough for the freezer for us this year. So, okay. Um, so is that very yeah, popular so, uh, um, this year, in Alaska? What's that mean? I mean, like um, fishing and farming. Do you find that um, more people are doing that in Alaska than? Yes, uh, definitely um, than it's, Brooklyn. It's a nat- <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a natural. It's a natural thing here. Uh, I think that's one of the things that attracted me to and my my spouse to actually stay here after the military. Um, uh because i retired I, I retired in korea and then we came back here in 2014. Mm-hmm. um you know because growing up in saint lucia that's exactly the life that I, that i had you know we had um we lived in castries but we had a uh a mountain 
farming area where we grew ground provisions and had okay. chickens and all this stuff. And we mm -hmm. went there every weekend or every other weekend, to, you know, to check on the animals, but to, you know, to weed the garden. And I, I miss that, you know, and you can't have that. In, I tell know, in people all the time. I wasn't, I was an adult before I realized that St. Lucia had grocery stores because we just oh, yes, used exactly. them. <laughs> I mean, exactly. you knew the bread man, you knew the guy, yep. you know, you knew everybody that had the fresh stuff. So yeah, exactly. but back to Thanksgiving, what's, what's mm -hmm. coming across your family's table this thanksgiving uh whole salmon uh i'm doing the, uh, i'm doing the nice. whole salmon i'm doing um cassava pone uh i'm doing yeah i'm doing whole salmon i'm doing cassava pone with our grown cassava um i'm doing what else am i doing i think i'm doing yeah i'm doing marby i'm doing some of the drinks i'm doing marby i'm doing sorrel mm -hmm. and my spouse my spouse is doing her mac and her bajan mac and cheese Bobby okay what, what what's in the bajan mac and cheese i can't i can't give you that recipe oh you'd have to kill me but, i get but, it i but, get it but what but makes it bajan is it because a bajan is cooking it it no or they do a little extra little recipe. oh yeah it, 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 it's her mother's recipe and it's it's unlike any i could i could reference you to people that that's had it at our house and it's unlike any <laughs> mac and cheese you can have uh, okay so yeah, she's making that. My daughter's making um what she, she says she's making this year. She's doing some baking, she's making some sweet bread, she's making coconut bread. I think she's gonna do a cheese, uh pumpkin cheesecake. Mm-hmm. I yeah, like so, it. That sounds yeah. like a very hearty yet healthy uh Thanksgiving. You know, I was just talking today about Thanksgiving wellness and you know, really just encouraging people to not think of Thanksgiving as just, you know, this month long affair. Um, it's right. okay for it to just be a day and it's okay oh, yeah. for yeah, um for for you to not wake up feeling guilty in two weeks right. about it. So if someone wanted to start um their own organic or sustainable living and they want to do it either on a budget or they don't have beautiful garden area what would you reckon where would you recommend that they start or how uh <clears throat> i would recommend i would recommend um i would recommend starting in and within yourself within figure and figure out what do you like to eat um and what do you um what do you what do you what can you grow readily um like for example if you love if you love salads you know um you could start there start with a salad you know get one of the little uh tabletop growing systems you could grow tomatoes on there you could grow your lettuce on there you could start with that it doesn't have to be a whole meal you know you could start small um mm -hmm. if you have about if you have a balcony get one of those hanging um pot systems or standing okay. pot system, the self-watering systems, you could grow a ton of food on there. Um, and if you're in a warm climate, you, you could grow year round. You know, um, if your climate's not like mine, take advantage of that, you know, but start small and do not grow mm -hmm. things that you don't like, that you know you're not gonna eat. <laughs> <You don't. laughs> Just a waste of space. <laughs> no, if you, um, and when I say that, with, with with health in mind because sometimes the things you don't like to eat is what what you're lacking in vitamins and nutrients so True. one of the one, one of the best ways to start is one of the things that we've done uh we we did a uh hair follicle test to find out what your oh. allergies are yeah very important i i've actually seen you know. several of these types of tests that you can send um hair follicles you can also send saliva right. where they'll send you back yes you send it away on send it what? away yeah hmm. right and then, and then you go from there um just you I know like i said plant a seed and see what happens um and see what happens i love yeah. it i think you know i've been wanting to start like an herb garden and at least start there that way oh my um, goodness herbs, you know, and, and, and herbs, this... herbs are very easy yeah and, but and you know so i really know. want to kind of break the cycle of always having to go for like the lowry's or the you know complete season and just try to find ways to um grow my own flavors and so i think i wanted yeah. to start there um but like you said there's so many ways that you can 
um, you know, take advantage of your living space. Right. Um, what would you mm -hmm. say besides just like the growing some must have, like, you know, do you have to have a deep freezer? What about storage? Like, how do you actually sustain the things that you grow and not feel like, you know, I have to eat it like well, now? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's more or less on the sustainable side when you start growing and you have a surplus and then you need to store mm -hmm. it. Um, uh, the must have the must haves is, is by your family size you know um like this year we we thought we were going to need a, a bigger deep, deep freezer but we made it work you know um we, we bought less you know we bought less chicken I, I, I raised less chicken i raised less ducks we didn't do chickens and ducks wait a minute you skipped that part you skipped the part about you raising <laughs> your own chicken and ducks yeah we ra yeah we raised our own you got a whole farm ducks, so. well, <laughs> well we're working them? towards that uh organic 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 food or um like when we grow the broccoli and the lettuce and stuff they eat the the leaves off of that we feed okay. them those things yeah so depending yeah. on the size of who you're trying to feed and how long you want it to keep uh, maybe a deep right. freezer might be a good investment yeah but not a big one you know you, you don't want to you don't want to get into the, the 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 point of trying to fill it up you know, right. that's not the, that's not, you want your food to be fresh. You don't want to, have, you know, you, wanna yeah. you don't want to start throwing things away because you forgot it was there. And it's now it's, now it's, um, uh, freezer burn. Um, mm -hmm. so gradually, gradually, you know, you get a small one, uh, and, and on the point of, um, as you mentioned, herbs, uh, on the point of trying to, you know, even growing your own herbs, you can always start by simply getting organic herbs and mm -hmm. uh, either grounding them yourself and making your own seasoning or just put them in olive oil and cook that way. You know, just let them sit in olive oil like um, garlic and um, oregano mm -hmm. and um, uh, what's the one we use on corn all the time? Uh, I can't remember, but you could just, you could just make infused oils and then start from there. Oh, uh, well, that's yeah, an idea. Yeah. Yeah, once your once your taste buds get woken up, uh, I'm telling you, you're gonna start you're gonna start looking for things to grow. <laughs> well, you know, I would say definitely going plant based. My taste buds woke up to like I remember one day I was just like craving Brussels sprouts. I'm like, why? Like yeah, that was never. Yeah. But I found just ways that I like to eat things, and yeah, um, exactly. after a while, like you say, you just start seeking those things out, and your taste right. buds change over time. There's things that I used yeah, to eat do. when I was younger, and now I'm just like, what was I going through? How was I? How yeah. was I eating that kind of stuff? Um, but that's okay. Um, you yeah. know, for to change, and I think wanna, we can embrace that. Yeah, you also want to take a look at your salts, also. Um, mm -hmm. Like, uh, pro you know, you want to you want to look at. Um, possibly getting natural salts um, yeah for your, for your like the himalayas yeah absolutely right, exactly. absolutely exactly. but charlie before we get out of here i want you to give the people some advice you know what would you say your best advice for going organic or you know doing some sustainable growing what would you be your your number one advice for why people should do this my number one advice as to why folks should do it uh longer healthy life you know uh a more balanced life in terms of um your well-being your mental state your um your sleep um it 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 it, it helps everything you know um I, i'm i'm categorized as a disabled veteran but when i introduce myself i don't say hey you know edmund charlie palmer i'm a disabled veteran um okay. because I truly know that my eating has kept me um, balanced, if you will, in terms of my PTSD and um, you know other things that I'm dealing with, my pain. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, like a lot of my brothers and sisters, they, they you know they turn to the doctor for the medical advice and you know just get a pill. But you know, and until I uh, here's here's a good point, and I always tell people this. Until I see a tree that produces pills, I'm not taking pills. There's no tree that produces a pill that could ju that could just fix one ailment. No. So you no. can't get your vitamins like that. Now that now don't get me wrong, there are things that you can take like your vitamin D, 
but you have to take things that help absorb vitamin D into your body. You mm -hmm. can't just take D by itself. You have to take magnesium with it also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it, it's not just yeah. So it's not just popping a pill. You have to you have Absolutely. to know what you're putting in your body. Absolutely. So, well, thank you, Charlie, message. for joining me. That was ex excellent advice, you know, and and it's right in line. Um, which is how I feel, you know, I think that every right. little bit that people can take, um, every little step that they can take to live in a healthier um, life is like a step closer towards, you know, just freedom. Um, right, you know, exactly. we've seen a lot with our family members and people that, um, you know, they end up in, in not too great a health as they get older. And so right. I think that, you know, just taking that charge and saying, Hey, I want to do better for myself, for my kids, for my family. And I mm -hmm. always all want the people around me to do better. So I appreciate right. that. We have come to the end of our broadcast. I'd like to thank my wonderful guest, Mr. Charlie Palmer. Wonderful thank conversation. You for, thank you for having me. Sustainably living. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Don't eat too much. Have fun and make sure you take a walk. And make sure you catch me on Mondays at 730 for my better living. Thank you. Peace out.